Heath Township is one of the townships of Allegan County that were distinguished in its beginning for their grand old pine forests. There are a few small lakes in the township which reflect brightly the live long year, the evergreen foliage of the pines, and furnish fishing for the boys on rainy days and moonlit nights. Rabbit River winds very crookedly in the northwest corner. The Allegan Journal, May 11th, 1878. Today, Hamilton, Michigan is a typical, small, passer through town with perhaps more corn than people. We have a subway, even a Dollar General. But there's a whole lot more to this little town than meets the eye of the average passerby. From family owned businesses to a vibrant farming community. There's a lot of history to this town and Hamilton Community Schools is at the heart of it. I'm Lauren Josperns, a 69 plus year native of Hamilton. And this is the story of us. The year is 1831. Calvin Britton completes the survey of Heath Township, distinguishing it from Allegan Township. Despite the fact that it would take an additional 19 years for the first settler, Mr. Simon Howe, to obtain control of a portion of the land, Heath is officially on the map. Mr. Simon Howe enters Heath in 1850 when he obtains control under a contract of a portion of Section G upon which he and Colonel John Littlejohn erected a sawmill on Rabbit River. It is the first of many business opportunities to be developed within the township. In addition to the development of the sawmill, Mr. Howe became the town's first postmaster on May 30th, 1851. For a time, many of Hamilton's residents were transient and engaged in the lumber business. With the building of the railroad in 1868 by the Allegan and Howland Railroad Company, soon the permanent population began to increase. The town continued to develop in 1893 when the township was bonded for funds under the direction of Charles Woodruff as commissioner to build a new bridge. This replaced the old bridge, which was twice as long and which floated away with high water, carrying with it two men John Strabbing and Mr. Miss Cotton, who were rescued later. Mr. Charles Brownell was also carried downstream on a log pile and was rescued from the Balks River bottoms where he clung to a tree in passing. Over 1,200 cords of slabs were used to fill the roadbed on the north end of the bridge. With the population beginning to increase, the town of Hamilton saw the beginnings of many new businesses. The Hamilton Hotel was built in 1872 and was kept by C.M. Woodruff. This building was replaced by what was known as the Ford Garage in 1925. Other early business places included the general store of H.J. Fisher. This building later burned and a post office was built at the location. J. Colbert and C. Baker built the Scutmott Brothers store. Dr. Charles Kimber was the proprietor of a public hall and drug store, which was later occupied by the general store of H.H. Nineheis. Mr. Becker of Holland built the H.J. Lamp and Hardware store, which was used in the past as a dwelling, creamery, and general store. Lev Slotman operated the grocery previously built by Kirschman and it is one of the oldest business places having been used as a post office, dwelling, and hardware. In addition to service-based businesses, several industrial businesses have been a part of Hamilton's history. John Colbert Sr. established a sawmill in 1881 that was a good venture until 1891 when timber became scarce. The flour mill known as Culvert Milling Company was built in 1893 and was known as Hamilton Milling Company. A lumber mill built by C. Baker 
was then operated by Luckton and Hagelskamp before being used as a furniture factory. Canvas gloves were at one time manufactured on the north side of the river, and H.J. Hines Company operated a pickle salting station on the south side, which was later occupied by John Brink Lumber Company. The first school in Heath Township was opened in District 1 and was located in Section 28 near Bear Creek. As the population continued to grow in Heath Township, many other small one-room schoolhouses were built to provide an education for children in the area. Many fractional district school buildings were constructed and utilized for many years for elementary and middle school students. Handwritten attendance records, Christmas programs, and assignments tell us much about this time. Students seeking secondary education later traveled to larger consolidated districts such as Holland and Zealand. June 23, 1958, a special election was held. Proposal 1 called for uniting the territory of the fractional districts into one school district and was approved 1,078 to 231, thus making June 23, 1958, the birthday of Hamilton Community Schools. The following week, Allegan County Board of Education named the new district Hamilton Community Schools. School board members were selected with a vote. At their August meeting, Board of Education members selected an architect to construct a high school building and its first superintendent. Dr. Raymond J. Lokers was hired as the first superintendent of Hamilton Community Schools. The foundation for a strong school system was laid by Hamilton greats like Ray Lokers. Since then, the reins have been passed to the next generation. At the helm of Hamilton Community Schools today, Dave Tebow showcases how a strong vision for a school system is possible through cutting edge programs and strong community of eager learners. From his time as superintendent of Hamilton Community Schools, Dr. Lokers has made an impact through his abilities as a leader, and even today, his wisdom and advice rings true for many. Current Superintendent Dave Tebow had the opportunity to interview Dr. Lokers and learn a bit more about that advice. We had some teachers, some uh, schools, we were just one teacher for the whole school, school, elementary school. Mm -hmm. And you can just imagine. They're doing everything. Yeah, they're doing everything. And, um, oh, it was and in that in that case, right, if in that case, you're the one teacher, you get to make all the decisions. You get to, you set the rules, it's yeah. you, right? And now that person is a part of a team and they haven't had to be a part of a team before. Yeah. I like uh, just to talk, I guess. <laughs> and a lot of it is talking. A lot yeah. of it is communi communicating with different people. Yeah. Talking with kids, talking with yeah. the teachers, talking with the principals, yeah. listening to the community. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. A lot of that hasn't changed. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things in, in that have changed in the last 60 years. But I think one of the things that hasn't changed is that, that we're in a people business. I think the biggest thing is not to get mad. I think that's the, the thing. There may be things you don't like that happen and, and uh, they say bad things about you or something like that. But just don't get mad. If you, if you get mad at somebody in the uh, in, on school or anything else like that. And it doesn't have to be that. But just don't mind get mad. I mean, you maybe say, I don't think, uh, I I like this better than that, and so on, and so on. But give an answer. But don't say, that guy is no good, and uh, that we don't live with that other guy. We don't know what he has to go through. And here we are telling him that uh, he's no good, you know. I don't think you could have said anything that would help me more than what you just said. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to get mad and we don't have perspective, right? We don't know what that other person's going no, through. That's right. The guy tries a new thing. 
you know, and if it doesn't work, he throws that away and goes back to the old and so on, but he's always got his eyes open for possibilities. Uh, and uh, that's the way life is. Leadership is about having your eyes open for possibilities. Yeah. And for you to be able to say that today at a hundred and four, 103. 103. Don't make it worse. Than Don't that. make it worse than <laughs> at 103 to be able to say that eyes open for possibility. Oh That's yes, a, I, I think I, <clears throat> I have possibilities yet. Whether or not I stay up uh, <laughs> and watch television, or whether <laughs> I go to uh, some other place or do something, and um, yeah, it's still life for me and I'm trying to make the most of it and I just uh, thankful for what God has given me and that I have the opportunity to do the things that I can do. Hamilton is special. It's a special place because of its people. Because of its people and the values that those people represent. We look forward to the future, confident, that we still instill those values into our young people today. And if we continue with that focus, the future will continue to remain bright. <laughs>